The White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce and On Location TV 19 are proud to present Your Business Matters, dedicated to your business needs. The White Bear Area Chamber is a nonprofit business organization serving as an advocate for the White Bear Area and its business community. Now here is the Executive Director of the White Bear Area Chamber and the host of Your Business Matters, Tom Snell. Welcome to Your Business Matters, brought to you by the White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce. Each month we interview community leaders and local business owners so we can be better informed about the developments in our community. Today I'm pleased to welcome Katie Crosby Lehman, founding partner in the law firm Cerisi Conlon. Ms. Lehman was one of the attorneys involved in the settlement of the lawsuit against the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources brought on by the White Bear Lake Restoration Association. From the White Bear Lake Restoration Association board, we have Shannon Whitaker. We will discuss the implications of the lawsuit and how that lawsuit is progressing. All right. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today on Your Business Matters. We're going to get right down to some of the things that are happening uh, with this lawsuit. And I want to present uh, these questions to both of you. Mm -hmm. So please feel free to uh, come in and uh, discuss this at your convenience. First question is, recently I read that the city of Vadnais Heights came out opposed to some of the key elements in the lawsuit, the progression of going over to surface water. And I think you're going to be seeing more of that in the local communities based on the cost and based on some of the public information on cities using their own water resources as a funding tool. Mm -hmm. Can you answer why do you think that's happening and also uh, did you expect that with the lawsuit? Well, I really think there's a short answer and a long answer okay. to this question. The long answer starts with what the lawsuit is about. So Minnesota enacted an Environmental Rights Act, which allows, and in fact says that it's every person's right and responsibility to protect the air, water, land, and natural resources of Minnesota. And by doing that, by protecting those rights, the Minnesota gave mm -hmm. all of us a right to sue in the name of the state of Minnesota to protect the natural resources. And White Bear Lake would be one of those resources. Certainly right. is. And the court has found that White Bear Lake is a natural resource that deserves to be protected. So the White Bear Lake Restoration Association mm -hmm. filed a lawsuit. And as part of that, we had to publicize the lawsuit. And everyone knows this lawsuit's been heavily publicized. Yes. Everyone knew about it. As part of this lawsuit, cities, communities, and other people had the right to intervene and join us. White Bear mm -hmm. Lake did, and so did White Bear Lake Township, as well as the Homeowners mm -hmm. Association. So people did join us. Other cities, including Badness Heights, could have joined us. They evaluated it and opted not to. So it's important mm -hmm. to know it was their choice okay. not to be involved in the yep. litigation. And if they weren't involved in the litigation, they didn't have a seat at the table for the settlement agreement. So that's a choice that they made. The short answer is change is hard. We're at the point now where we have incredible opportunity. And the, if the communities were to band together and uh, switch from, surface, from groundwater to surface water, they would have an incredible opportunity. They could be a model for the entire United States. Okay, why? Okay, you so said they could be a model, but why is it important to for a community to go from groundwater, which is relatively an inexpensive venue, you just drill a hole in the ground and you get your water, and then go over to surface water, which I think I read would cost uh, just the communities around White Bear Lake around $260 million to make that, uh, that transfer. I think that number's high. Okay. The DNR often uses the highest number. Um, yep. There are lower numbers involved too. But it's important to focus that surface water is renewable. If we want to provide water for generations to come and secure water, not just for people but for businesses, let's use it as a growth opportunity. Businesses. Why, would it, why is this important to business, do you think? Business needs water. And if you know, if the businesses move in here and know that they're going to have the opportunity to have long-term water, it's going to be able to be a growth opportunity for the Northeast Metro so, communities. So are both of you saying that, that um, 
the uh, groundwater that we use is not a long-term solution for business, and if it isn't, why do you think that is? Well, the Met Council has studied the aquifer that we're, all these communities are drawing on. And by 20, in the next 30 years, that aquifer will go down to 50% or lower, which is an unsustainable and untenable position for our growing communities to live on. So it really is getting to a point where 15 years goes pretty fast. You know, 15, 20 years, that's going to be at a point where we're not going to have as many options as we do now to solve a problem that's clearly coming down our road. You know, Vadness Heights has a well. All these communities have mm -hmm. high-capacity municipal wells. It's not their water they're tapping into. It's our water. It's all of our water. This aquifer underlies a huge part of the Northeast metro area. We all have to figure out how to share it and how to steward it for the future. It's not just a short-term deal that Vadness Heights is pumping out just this little corner of the aquifer. It all is getting shared and it's all getting used. One part also for businesses about the settlement that hasn't been discussed is um, we're changing some of the plumbing codes or allowing some of the plumbing codes to be updated. So reuse of water, gray water use, businesses recycling their own water is going to be much more permittable going forward than it has been in the past. Would you go uh, explain that a little bit further? What does that mean? What does gray water mean? So what if is, a business uh, can retreat cheap? water or doesn't need absolutely pure clean water for their function, they can have it at a lower rate or recycle it within their own facility to the standards they need to be used. Okay. So now, that's something that okay. hadn't been done before. Mm -hmm. Now, I, uh, what happens? I think uh, if certain things aren't done, doesn't the lawsuit come back? Yes. So. Mm -hmm. The DNR wanted an opportunity to solve this problem in the community and with the legislature, and we agreed to give them time and work as hard as we can to encourage them and um, put everyone in the best light possible to reach mm -hmm. the outcome we want, which is the switch to surface water. August 2016 is the first deadline. So in August of 2016, the funding for the feasibility and design of the switch of the first six communities from groundwater That's to surface water. That's coming up pretty quickly. It's coming up pretty it's quickly. A year from now, yeah. And then the next deadline is August of 2017, which is the funding for the actual construction. Has there been any talk about where the money is coming from? Well, it would be a bonding bill of some sort. So. I think first phase is to get all the cities, the six cities uh, that are named particularly on to a shared platform of agreement. And then there's lots of ways to operate water. You know, we're a little unique in Minnesota. There's operating commissions for water all over the country that have taxing powers and spending powers and can manage water systems, large water systems. Are there environmental groups that would be opposed to bringing surface water in from the Mississippi River to do various things like uh, uh, move over to surface water mm -hmm. here? I mean, mm -hmm. that don't want to use uh, water from the Mississippi. Groups like the um, Friends of the Mississippi, what are their thoughts on this? I haven't had any input from them okay. yet on this, mm -hmm. but it's important to know that Minneapolis and St. Paul use the oh, Mississippi River yeah. surface okay. water, and they always have. As the suburbs grew, instead of hooking into the surface water system, suburbs drilled down and created wells. It's much less expensive mm -hmm. to build a well than hook up miles of pipe. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we're really just looking to expand the original system, which was mm -hmm. the surface water for Minneapolis and St. Paul. Okay. How much authority does the DNR actually have to enact legislation? Are they just an advisory group, or do they have some real teeth where they can come and say, we're going to do this? The DNR has to go through the legislative process. Right. It doesn't have power to say, this is the law. It has to work through the mm -hmm. communities and the legislatures like any other group. Um, but they do have backing. If the DNR wants to get something done and the governor feels strongly about that um, as, and other senior officials in the legislature, we're hopeful that that's, that's okay. going to be what it takes. Now, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. You just mentioned the governor. Mm -hmm. 
Has there been any discussion with the governor about this issue from I anyone? I haven't had discussions with them. He, you know, he's part. The DNR is a branch of the state. Right. We would right. hope that the DNR had been has been involving him all along. Um, mm -hmm. But again, this is an issue that goes to the policy and the water structure in Minnesota. It it should be heard at the highest well, level. We've talked a lot with our local legislators and representative. Right. The White Bear Lake Restoration Association has, and we have pretty constant communication with them and I think as a citizens group we'd love to speak to the governor and have an opportunity to tell him our story and the story of White Bear Lake and and where we're at so we're always looking as a group to speak to anybody in the political system that's interested in hearing about okay. White Bear Lake. All right. Well, I want to get back to another thing that we had we had talked about a little bit earlier and that was this uh, legislation I think that passed uh, Many years ago, that said that we have to preserve. There's a there's a that citizens have a right to mm -hmm. uh, to go before the various agencies to preserve our natural resources. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that the uh, that the state of Minnesota is obligated to do some of the things that the lawsuit uh, indicated? Well, it means a judge has power. So okay. Minnesota's Environmental Rights Act allows people to file lawsuits on behalf of the state and to be heard by a judge. Mm -hmm. And the judge has ruled that she has power to hear this case. And so the judge will issue rulings and then the DNR as a part of the lawsuit will have to abide by those rulings. Mm -hmm. We don't know ultimately what will happen, but we're um, not giving up yet and we're right. continuing on in this process. Okay, and so, and again, if the if nothing is done in a couple of years and the lawsuit just snaps back into in court motion and moves forward. Um, I want to bring up something that was not part of the lawsuit mm -hmm. uh, and that a lot there uh, seems to be um, support among some parts of the community to augment White Bear Lake. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the issues that we talked about came about because of what people have seen happen in the second largest lake in the uh, metropolitan area. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to elaborate on that a little bit. Um, why don't you think that was part of the lawsuit? And um, uh, is there a reason for that? And number two, uh, will the, uh, is the law, does the lawsuit uh, take away uh, any of the rights for uh, people to pursue uh, lake augmentation as a remedy for at least bringing water into the lake. If, just to clarify one thing, augmentation is one of the forms of relief that we're seeking in the lawsuit. It's well, it not is. required under the right. settlement. It's allowed. It's allowed. Um, I get, think it's really a neutral in, under the settlement that private um, entities and communities mm -hmm. have the right to request augmentation and to follow the permitting for augmentation. But the DNR wasn't required to fund it or, or um, take special actions under the settlement agreement. Does this mean it's just kind of left out? No, it means okay. that we as a community or White Bear Lake or any party in, interested in augmentation has the right to pursue it and go through the permitting process without any bias or discrimination against okay. it because right. it's also within this lawsuit phase. So you can look at diff Lake Gilfillan, Snail right. Lake, um, other lakes in our area that have gone through so the So there have been other lakes in our area that, that have been are augmented. currently mm -hmm. being augmentation or have the ability to be augmented. And I think there's another permit process under review for another lake in our area. So it's been done, it's been highly successful, and it is certainly allowable to have the permitting process go forward and be treated just as mm -hmm. any other lake seeking so, augmentation. So um, why was it basically left out of the lawsuit then? I mean, it seems to me that the original intent of all this was from people that uh, had some uh, equity stake in having uh, the White Bear Lake uh, as a as a fine lake in our community. So what what was some of the reasons why that didn't uh, get directly into the lawsuit? Do you think it is directly in the lawsuit? Okay. So as 
we, when we, if, if and when we're back in court, we will be asking the judge to augment White Bear Lake in addition to switching from surface water to groundwater. Oh, That's one okay. of the options that she'll have. So we want to give her as many options as she can to fix the problem. Um, and augmentation is certainly on the table there. It wasn't part of a requirement for the DNR to act in the settlement. So I think that's okay. the distinction that's, that's being made here. Okay. And so, currently, many of the local legislators have determined that augmentation is a good medium-term path for the lake while this larger right, right. question of the switch over to surface water goes on. So uh, the, our local legislators have led the charge yep. in pushing forward for an augmentation study. So that's wonderful. Right. and you know, hopefully will be successful. Now, uh, I think part of the uh, lawsuit too dealt with um, the ability to cut water consumption. Is that correct? Uh, the amount of water that we're using in our communities to, and I think that uh, one of there is an organization called Race to Reduce uh -huh. that's doing something in that uh, yeah. area. And I was wondering, uh, you, uh, Shannon, maybe you want to comment on yeah. that if you're familiar yeah. with it? Well. Part of the lawsuit was for the plaintiffs, which is the White Bear Lake and Restoration Association and Homeowners Association, to work with the local communities to encourage conservation, because conservation goals are part of the lawsuit. That's something we all need to think about and change our habits about moving forward not only for White Bear Lake, but just for the general health of our aquifers. So we've been working very closely with some of the organizations you named, like Race to Reduce, and coming up with flyers and informational pieces that went to every resident around the six uh, communities in the lake. We've been helping with public events and helping um, Race to Reduce get funding for their school programs in Montemedia and White Bear Lake about. Mm -hmm. and, and what's um, that about? Water reduction in the home. So they do water audits, they talk, they had a Minnesota Green Corps uh, student, college graduate, go in and teach curriculum based on auditing your water use, how to decrease it, and how to work with community on various projects. Are for you water familiar? Reduction. Has there been any? This is a voluntary effort, right? It's not a. Uh, there isn't a uh, entity in this that would say uh, the local units of government have to cut water use. This is basically voluntary, right? Local units of government have been establishing water reduction. Well, they targets, have. They have. Like okay. Birchwood, if you looked in the last couple weeks of the White Bear Press just announced a whole series of water reduction states uh, um, ideas and you know water restrictions for residents so um, okay. and they're also undertaking a big water repair of their water lines which is a huge does that have an of, effect on, yes, on the water use city water lines are a huge source of leakage and waste in the system. So a lot of communities are really grabbing the bull by the horns and being aggressive about trying to track down their water use and water waste. So it's been a great to see it just get into the community lexicon that we're mm -hmm. all learning to retrain our habits around use, water use, and learn new things. Okay. So it's been wonderful. And if people are interested in getting further information about that, mm -hmm. who would they contact, Shannon? Well, they could go to our website, WBLRA.org. We have posted a number of connections to the EPA, which has a whole section on water sense appliance, high efficiency water appliances. If you are remodeling uh, drought resistant plants from the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum, if you're landscaping, uh, the Metropolitan Council has a great homeowner's toolkit for water reduction. So we have links to probably 10 to 12 different organizations that have do-it-yourself videos on repairs in your home mm -hmm. and all sorts of ideas on how to cut your individual water mm -hmm. use. And, and I'm wondering too, uh, Katie, about the, the lawsuit. Is there any way that a pe person can find out more information about the lawsuit and about uh, the progress and what can, and what, ultimately uh, the results might be? 
Again, if they can go to the White Bear Lake Restoration Association's okay. website, okay. we link to key documents and provide progress reports on that website as well. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay, that's, uh, that's really uh, wonderful. Just for some uh, just real uh, quick uh, closing uh, arguments, I, I know that you both have been, I know that your firm has been in front of our chamber uh, many times, and we've mm -hmm. had Mike Cerisi out and mm -hmm. you, and I know that, uh, that we've really appreciated your uh, input into what's going on with our, with our lake and um, our uh, various uh, communities around. And uh, the White Bear Lake Restoration Association, uh, real quickly too, can you tell me a little bit about what is it? Well, it was an organization formed by a group of citizens in White Bear Lake, residents, um, mm -hmm. not just homeowners and a couple business owners to uh, form a nonprofit that could bring this lawsuit under the MIRA statute. So the re purpose is to restore White Bear Lake, to educate the community about the issues surrounding the lake and what we can all do about it, and protect it going into the future. So the, it's a nonprofit organization, all volunteer based. We probably have over 800 members in the community and the region and we're all about just bringing this process forward to address the issues of the low water level in White Bear Lake. Okay, well I want to thank both of you for coming on our program. Uh, for your business matters and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, look forward to future discussions on Great. White Bear Lake, the water usage and surface water versus groundwater. Thank, thank you, you very all much. Right. Thank you. Now I have a quick announcement about a very important event that's coming up on Wednesday, August 19th. The White Bear Area Chamber has a special event that focuses on a new innovative small business financing plan. Visit the Chamber website for more details. I'm Tom Snell. For more events on the White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce, visit us at www whitebearlake.com. Thank you for joining me today on Your Business Matters. watching your business matters for more information on this program or the white bear area chamber visit www.whitebearchamber.com or call 651-429-8593